Welcome to the 2021 The Games Room Room Tour. This is my first room tour that I've done. I, in this game room tour, plan on showing you an overview of um, the place that I game and film and um, that we as a family enjoy. And then um, I'll go through a few bits and pieces about the game room itself and a few bits of the collection that might be of interest. Um, not sure how long this is going to last. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Um, if you are interested in all things that you see here or anything that you see here, please take a look at my other videos because they may, might be of interest as well. I have, before we get into the full overview, a great deal of this um, has been paid for from buying and selling. So buying and selling from all manner of places and then slowly building up the funds, spending it on things that you see here. Anything that is has cost me a significant amount, I'll go over. Um, things that are free, as in free, they cost basically the petrol money to get to and from places. Um, I'll just skip over those as, um, as we go because there's no use bringing it up all the time. So just the things that have actually cost uh, real kind of family money or real money um, I'll mention those as we go if you see things in this game room tour that you would like to know more about please leave a comment down below and I'll try and get to those as well um, let's do the overview and we shall go from there okay I should have mentioned before as well that um, my son is playing some video games upstairs tonight so I can um, do this and the rest of the family is occupied elsewhere so if you hear some noise apologies about that okay starting off with the place that I well I do a lot of my videos um, I don't know if I will in the future but this is the kind of almost the angle that you see in a lot of the videos um, and then so that's the CD collection with the record um, player there and then we pan around we have the four arcade machines that you see in the back there um, I'll go through those in a bit more detail in a moment and we have a fridge over at the left just behind the chair and then going around further you can start to see the pool table hidden over I wonder if I can point yep there we are hidden over down there is another arcade machine that is um, my Frogger arcade machine I'll show you that in a little bit this is my or our stairway section that comes down here um, which is the main point of entry to the games room then it goes into the kind of almost like a, a mini lounge room setup that um, I've tried to create over there that has a bunch of games and a TV as well um, so we'll talk a little bit more about that later and then going around we also get back into this is all a big um, and open windowed area that you won't be able to see out of even if I did bring that over but I've just got the records and a few records and a few um, of the shooter games and things and car racing games there and then not much to see on that side so I'll quickly pan back and we are back to the start so let's go through through things in a little bit more detail and I'll kind of go to each section of the room and show you a bit from a better angle right just quickly before we go on to the other parts of the room um, the new disco ball we've also got the party lights that go across the room and then up here as well we have a handmade um it's a VB so Victoria bitter um which is an Australian Victorian beer um my dad's friend actually made this one it is a plane made out of cans so you see them at markets and things like that but um, that one is actually handmade by my dad's friend which makes it a bit more special and um, it goes well with the fridge that you'll see later on so just wanted to see show you what's kind of 
going on up there and then I'm going to turn off these lights that you see here so we can have a bit of a better view. Okay, starting here with a shot of my oldest um, arcade machine that I own, as in the one that I have had the longest, not the oldest cabinet. I'm not quite sure which one that would be. Actually, that would definitely be the Frogger. Um, but this is, so this was a blank shell. It was, so I'm talking about this one right here. It was a four player arcade machine, but they only had a three button set up for each player. Um, it didn't have anything in it. It was a strip cabinet and I worked my way from there. Um, I'm not going to go too much into the actual in-depth talk about what it's made from because if you want to know about any of these arcade machines I'm hoping to bring out individual videos. We already have one individual video of the Time Crisis um, machine there. But this essentially runs from a computer. It is, as I said, four players. It runs Maximus Arcade. So as in um, it is a Maximus Arcade front end. It has not only the four player capabilities, but it also has two arcade guns on the side. So there's one there in red. Come around to the other side. There's the one there in blue. So pick those up and sorry I can't do the zoom actually I'll just put it there and zoom in I don't have an auto zoom camera sorry um, this is as in the best quality one so this is a manual zoom um, so they are two arcade guns that I also program to work with the machine and with um, MAME there are a bunch of shooters that you can, or light gun shooters that you can use. And the nice thing about that is that is an often LCD screen as well. With the arcade guns, they work quite similar to the Wii remotes um, in that it's almost like you're using a mouse. Uh, but with the Wii light gun shooters, they often come up with a target where you can turn this target straight off and you're doing it based on actual trying to figure out where the bullets are going to land by the shots on the screen rather than following a target around if that makes sense I hope it does okay on to the car racer arcade machine that we have in the corner here this has a world rally which is in a um, I think it I believe it's an Atari Atari World Rally board in it. It is a generic cabinet um, which, it, which has a nice marquee on it. It has an LCD screen in it as well. It is running off the old components other than the LCD um, screen. So it is a jammer harness. So you could essentially swap that over with a few different arcade racing games but there aren't a great deal that fit this actual setup quite happy to keep that one as a world rally arcade machine that's one that i used to play a lot when i was younger so happy to really keep it the way it is it's only got the one pedal down there and it's got the two gears high and low it is good fun but it's not from a first person mode it is actually from an outer car um almost like a a oh, what do you call that it's a top-down perspective um almost as in as in, as if you're in a helicopter looking down so those bits separate to make it easier to move as well which is nice so the seat from the machine this one i have said i've already got a full video out of the time crisis arcade machine it is actually running a PlayStation 2 and a Wii in there. It came as a gutted cabinet as well for very cheap. Um, and so I worked it my way from there. This one is a tube television and it is only... It is the only one, actually. It is the only one that I have in the room. 
I really don't like the using the tube televisions very much. I try not to. I love the way LCDs look. Lots of people disagree, but um, yeah, it's just personal preference. I should have also I should mention as well that this machine is the one that had cost me um, some real money. So I think I put about five hundred dollars into that originally, and then the rest came from. Um, buying and selling this one was almost like almost a gift um, and then I upgraded it to the LCD again through buying and selling this one I paid fully through buying and selling so it was this one and this one was almost another gift um, I'll talk about what I mean by gift when I get over to that one I think so next to the time crisis to pretend arcade we have another pretend arcade this one actually came from ebay um and it was originally a sega dreamcast set up in there with a sega dreamcast wheel that was inset into the board um, where i have changed it around and actually changed quite a bit of this machine to make it into a Daytona looking machine with an Xbox 360 in there with a force feedback wheel that sits out so it actually feels more like a car would not recessed into the machine and it has the pedals down the bottom it has um, an actual proper car seat and I've just whacked a cover over the top um, and yeah, I'm, I really love that machine. It just plays so many great games from Xbox 360 and there's so many good ones that are force feedback. So when you hit a wall or things like that, it actually gives you a good kick back and a lot of them you can adjust the, the sensitivity so you can have it so that the motor is working hard or not working hard. And I've also kept a spare of that wheel because in time I bet it will burn out just the way just the way it is I think it's it's just it works hard and I think it has a a, a definite lifespan a um, couple of arcade bar stools back there I've, there's two I've got another two that I sit in front of this machine and then I use these felt ones these felt wooden stools with the blue four player arcade machine um so they're nice and company the kids don't fall off because that's the one that the kids use the most and i wouldn't want them falling off so we use the one with the back and the other ones get kind of used anyway coming down to the other arcade machine that i said was a bit of a gift um so the story behind that is my parents owned a caravan park for many years this machine was one that somebody had um they used to bring these arcade machines to and from the park and then one day they the person stopped coming and they they just were left there for years and years and um so they were a part of the caravan park and now they're a part of the games room which is really nice um I'd changed it over with an LCD monitor instead of having the original because the original burnt out and it's just oh, so much nicer the LCD screens. I know people do not think that but personal preference as I said. But a couple of stools that um, I ended up picking up those for like they're either five dollars or seven dollars fifty each. They were super cheap. The other steel bar stools that I got were I think 150 for four perhaps and then those ones were um, I bought them for my parents and they didn't they ended up changing the way their house looks so ended up getting those come back to me I guess okay so as I said that's the, the stairway so we come down there's a toilet and laundry through there and then we come into the kind of the lounge room area 
Um, got a bunch of games on the side that I'll try and show you soon, but that is an outdoor couch, but there's just nowhere in this house that we're in at the moment to put that couch. But it does the trick in here for sure. Um, it's actually a lot comfier than a lot of outdoor couches are. And then this is kind of the dog's area. Um, this is our two-year-old Beagle Cross Foxhound Milo. He's tuckered out. You'll probably hear him snoring on the camera, actually. It's late at night at the moment, so he's in his favourite little spot there. And then, yes, <laughs> sorry about his snoring. Um, then we have the two display racks that I do not normally have there. I normally have those tucked away next to the arcade machines, but um, for the sake of this video, I've put them over there. They actually get in the way of the pool table if they're not over near the arcades, but if nobody's playing pool, then they can sit there quite happily. Got some camera stuff over here that I've, looks a bit of a mess, but isn't normally. Then I have a bookshelf set up over there. And yeah, as I said, the normal area that shoot things. I say me and like I did a lot and that type of thing, but this is definitely a family room. It is a family games room. It is one that is fully accessible by the kids and whoever comes here and whatever they play with, they play with. And if things get wrecked, they get wrecked and we replace as we go. It is not I do not want a game room that is going to be just purely for show. Um, they look great and they they work for, I bet they work for lots of people, but um, we've got three boys um, and a dog and it's just a lot more fun for me and for my family if we had this fully accessible for everyone. So that's why, that's a major reason, reason actually I called the channel The Games Room is because it is not a man cave and things like that. I actually, um, it's not, I've never associated any part of a house that I've lived in as a man cave. Um, they're always family areas and that's the way that we, we like it. So we're progressive here at the game room. Um, so, you know, it's uh it's a it's a game room it's not a it's not a man cave right this is just the view from the other side so from that little lounge room area looking over this is what you see um normally it would be a little bit less of a mess actually let me move a couple of things the dog's up he's awake um this is normally the view that you get from the kind of the lounge room area looking over um the other side of the room and as I said you go from the stairs which are here and then you could go straight outside um, if that was where you were headed but who wants to head there at night time it's pitch black at the moment oh, I hope I didn't make you sick there um, so glass sliding doors they're massive they lead to the outside actually this is um, Queensland we're still in the Gold Coast region, but very much at the edges of it. And um, it's warm all year round. So um, it's nice and warm outside, even though it's nighttime. But Milo's going to tuck himself in anyway. This old pool table here is another relic from the the old caravan park that my parents owned it is a <laughs> it is a 20 cent machine which um, won't mean much to um, people from other parts of the world but one of the big things about the family game room is it's got to be able there have to be things that I can move by myself and a slate table I can't move by myself this table is much more manageable 
um, there was a slate table sitting in my parents' garage and they um, said that I could take that one with me if I wanted, but I just I just can't. I can't move it anywhere. All right, this area is actually one that I am... I don't want to change things around too much because, as I said, then be into a next place and... Anyway, it doesn't matter. This over here is a... A disc rack that actually spins. It has four sides on it. It normally has a towel on it because being in Queensland next to the windows it would be um, faded completely if I didn't have the towel on it for most of the time. So it normally has a towel on it. But actually I've just taken out a bunch of games and put them elsewhere so it's pretty bare at the, mo at the moment. It has the Wii U games that we have so I'll try and pan over those. Okay, so it has at the moment a bunch of Wii U titles and that is something about our game room that a lot of others, um, they, they differ than this. The only games that we have are games that we intend to play. There is no collecting for the sake of collecting. It is purely for the enjoyment of the stuff that's there. So if we've had enough of it or we don't want it, it goes. Um, this is the kids 360 stuff and some Kinect stuff. Love the Kinect sports games. Um, that's, not being, <laughs> that's not being sarcastic. I do love those ones, especially bowling. Um, bowling without having a controller in your hand is so cool, I reckon. Um, and we have had heaps of fun nights. So going down a lot of Lego 360 titles. Um, I'll hold on to these until the kids get a little bit older and then once they get older and they get sick of those, they shall go as well I reckon. No point holding on to them if you're never going to use them. This is a bunch of Wii stuff. It is not any of the light gun shooters. So it is all the Wii stuff that is not light gun related. And hopefully you can see that there's a bit of quality in there. And have this is GameCube on this side. Actually have a GameCube Game Boy player. Um, a region unlocker but most of the games that I have are the Australian or the power type anyway um, and only when you hit the bottom and you'll see the GameCube symbol go from here to here then we have our three American that I have um, yeah, I really only have the GameCube for the Resident Evil collection and because that's just a it has all the ones all the significant ones on there. Alright, so that is that spindle done. We have um, a switch upstairs. Um, we have the Xbox One upstairs at the moment. So down here at the moment set up is only the Wii U, Xbox 360 and I've just bought myself a Retro Tink Mini and this has Fighting Force in it at the moment on the TV obviously. Um, but that looks pretty good even though it's a, a big TV. It's not that big but it's um, I think that's 42 inches or so and the retro tink does a good job on that yeah a good size for here especially when you're sitting this close all the time you don't need it really monstrously large we don't have a a shed here which is a shame or a garage not a lock-up garage so things like the the swag and tent stuff and has to have a home so some of it's jammed in in amongst and we've got the lego dimension stuff that is all over the place um, yeah, that's all mixed in with other Lego and stuff now, just because that's how kids go, isn't it? Alright, this is how this area normally looks. Normally has this cover over it because, again, 
the sun shines through this window and really cooks the place so um, it is undercover most of the time. Let me roll that up. Okay starting at the top just got a couple of the Wii guns up there um, well just a box really and then hidden in that box there um, which is covered by a plastic bag is actually an Army of Darkness Bruce Campbell statue. It's just not out at the moment. Until we get a place where we know we're going to be for a few years that's not worth coming out so that will stay in there. Um, I don't have any other statues or not many other toy things or things like that to go around. A couple but not many so um, the toys and things will just get wrecked. No point having them and I'm not really interested in them. This whole shelf and I'll just give it an overview of it here is jam packed full of gaming stuff. I'm actually going to turn off this TV next to us. <laughs> so a whole bunch of gaming bits and pieces and games themselves. Um, maybe in time I'll get another another shelf but I don't know it's one of those things if it looks alright then I'm, I'm inclined to just keep it as it is but it is getting a bit full now so might almost be time. Classic Redneck Rampage I had that one in my youth um, that it very one I don't have many of the games that I owned back then I sold them off and don't regret it because I did initially um, I regretted selling them off but if I didn't sell them off I wouldn't have had more of an interest in kind of gaining them back kind of had that that hit where you're just like oh it'd be nice to have a few of those things back so if I didn't sell them off we wouldn't have we wouldn't have a games room like this so um, yeah don't regret it but that's one that I held on to just because it was so unique it's got like a newspaper a pretend newspaper in there with which is the manual it's just it's ridiculously good um, packaging and and kind of you know it's got the it's called embossed where it sticks out at the front um, with a slip cover the the actual um, game disc is an audio disc as well. I need to do a bit of a a video on some of the cool types of PC games there are out there. So this is, I should have mentioned that, this is a PC um, CD-ROM DOS version of that. Some of these are DOS, some of these are Windows 95, some of them are XP and not many are after that. So we have Rennick Rampage Calm again have to have that one. Um, that's another one that I used to play a lot when I was younger. Um, always a burnt copy, never a real. Um, would have been nice to give them money back in the day, but as a kid you never had it, so have it there, but unfortunately that was bought second hand. Nobody gets any money except for the person who's selling it on eBay, huh? Um, Star Wars Dark Forces is one that I bought off eBay as well. Doom, the Ultimate Doom, which is one that I bought from a market for 50 cents. Now that goes for about 150 plus, which is just one of those things at the moment. I, you know, didn't even think about. It wasn't even one that was. A, a, I thought it was a good deal, but I didn't think it would be quite the deal that it was. Just how some of these things work. House of Dead is one that I had already from my youth. Won't go through all these, just the big ones are kind of nice to see. Platinum Worms 2, that's another one. One of my originals. And Star Wars Monopoly is my last of the original kind of games that I owned. <clears throat> then just going over the other ones. Half-Life Collection is a nice one to have there. 
A lot of these ones just come from op shops and things. A um, couple of ones that I'm considering getting rid of. And then a bunch of ones from like Sierra, as soon as you see Sierra in stack there, then you know that you're in for some quality. Um, so there's some Sierra titles in there, a bunch of other titles in there as well. Demo discs and the like. That Half-Life one is actually quite a rarity. It has um, some Half-Life stuff on it that was, wasn't really released in many other places. Should talk about that at some point. And a whole multi-collection up the back. We can't see. There we are. Um, I won't get it out there. Right, going down the shelf. Second shelf here. Um, just got a, a few PlayStation shooters at the front there. Oh, and then it gets into the more retro things. So these are boxed NES up there. They're in. They're in their little protectors. Um. A few of these came from family, a few from friends, and a lot of them came from eBay. There's a, an Australian knockoff release. Interesting one. Another one that I should do a bit of a video on at one time. HES. Um, backpacking off of... Is that what they call it? Like when you extend? It goes off of... Um, a, an official release. You have to have an official release game <clears throat> in there. Which is that. What have we got there? Lifeboat. That's another thing from my youth that I kept. Um, that's a Game & Watch. And then going down the side here, here's my... Here's my loose NES stuff. Die hard in that little box at the back. What's that? Top secret and tips. Stuff like that I really don't care too much about. Cool to look at for five seconds and then not really interested in it again. Some more NES um, box stuff there. I used to have this game. Mine's all ripped up here, as you can see. Gargoyles 2. Um, such an expensive game now. I bought my original copy for $5 and it was really nice condition. Sold it off for peanuts. Um, but, yeah, as I said, things like that happen. It's like with the, the Doom thing up there, 50 cents for a box copy of Doom, that's going for 150 bucks. Sold my box copy of this one for next to nothing, but things, you know, a bit of give and take, a bit of um, win and lose. Um, yeah, so Gargoyles Quest 2, that was $50 like it is from a market. Um, some of these are not the condition that they look, like the Donkey Kong games, that one is the next rental. I love that stuff. It's just, um, who was it talking about that? Uh, Geordie Slasher was just talking about um, having a bit of character in games and thoroughly agree. So that is something that I really enjoy seeing on my games as well. But things like that, a bit disappointing when the X rentals used to cut their, their boxes. So not so much that much character. A little bit less character than that is nice. And that's another X rental. So all three of mine are X rental. So not everything is as it seems here. Um, I'll just pan across because it got low battery and might cut out here or very soon. And then I'll have to charge and come back. I've only got the one battery. So it goes into Nintendo 64 from here. And again, not all the boxes are as they seem. What is that hiding there? Oh, the Brawler 64 manual. This one, 
This one is one that I mentioned to Andrew at the Game Display. Um, great channel, by the way. The one that I've been following for years. And um, this did not come out in America. This is the Super Mario All-Stars with the Super Mario World boxed copy of that. So it is not one that is that you see in many regions. It normally came boxed. This one with the Super Mario World normally came boxed with consoles and did not come with a a box at all. Um, and it didn't come that way in Australia either. It didn't come this way, so I had to grab this one from the UK because it's just... I love that copy. <clears throat> there are heaps of Super Mario All-Stars, um, but not with the Super Mario World box. That's something that's a bit unique. When we drop down here, we have the classics. So the NES and the SNES, they had to include a whole bunch of retro, oh sorry, a whole bunch of um, extra games. Only enough so that they all still retain pictures on the menu. If you try and get the whole whole library in, then you lose your pictures. So I did not go that far. I really like having the pictures on the menu there. What's that? The Wii U Twilight. Twilight Princess um, bundle there. A few 3DS games. Not. I like the 3DS console, but there's not a lot of games that actually interest me on that system. So there's a few that I use and a few that my son has got over time. Here's a f another um, bit of his collection. So um, a bunch of his Switch games. I think he's got maybe even a few extras somewhere. And then we go into a kind of a useless console to collect for because you have to download every time you, well, not every time. You have to download every time you install this on a new console or one that hasn't had the install before. So, um, or one that you've deleted the install off of. So that's really frustrating because you just constantly grabbing stuff from the internet. But games like um, the new Immortals Phoenix Rising, they won't even let you play past a certain point unless you've had it connected to the internet and that's just a single player game. So not worth having these for collective purposes. These are just to play now and most of those will go in the future, I would say. Just hold on to the favorites. Then we go across to the original Original Xbox. Um, there's a few really good ones in there. These ones I wouldn't keep, but they're worth nothing because the discs, is, uh, discs are fairly scratched. Otherwise they would be gone too. Love the Max Payne games. Max Payne 3 is probably my favorite game of all time. It's so good. Call of Cthulhu, there is um, an expensive one. Manhunt is one that is banned in Australia, which is, um, but you can, like it's not banned in the UK. So that's where that copy came from. It actually did get a release and then it got banned. Um, Sun Hill 2 is another expensive one there. Okay, coming down, down to the next shelf, we have the Xbox 360 games. This is my, probably my favorite console of all time, I would say. Far Cry 2 Collector's Edition that came from the op shop, not complete. Such a great game though. Um, one of my mates, well, my mate Ash was telling me that it has not aged well though, so it is one of my favorite games and it is not, Great to hear that. Um, what else can we say? Got a couple of these doubles that I used to use in two Xbox 360 consoles hooked up together. Left the Dead 2 and another one that originally got um, wasn't allowed to be released in Australia without changes. So that is why my copy has, I think it's Japanese writing on it. 
Um, so we can play that one without any mods. Um, with blood and, you know, with the red blood, because they changed it to green in Australia. And they also took away the bodies disappear. They disappear as soon as they are done away with. Um, so had to have a proper copy of that one. Um, a lot of those are really cheap games, except for the Metal Gear Solid HD collection that is not a cheap game over here, um, about $50. And then, what else do we have here? This Quake 4 version, they don't say on the front that some of them, not all of them, come with a bonus disc. So if you can get yourself <clears throat> one with the bonus disc, I don't think it even says it on there, does it? Yeah, there it is. So, up the top there it says bonus disc. So if you can get yourself one of these with the bonus disc, disc that comes with Quake 2 for the Xbox 360. Something that you will not get if you only get the one disc version. So, something that is worth checking for every time. Um, yeah, some interesting titles there. This one is jumping up in value all the time, Deadly Premonition. I love that game. It is like playing a PlayStation 2 game. It's a PlayStation 2 type graphics and stuff, but it is a great game. Um, not for everyone. Uh, what else? So many good games on the Xbox 360. Dead Space, scary games. Um, Dark Souls is one that I have not played, but I have number one and two. That was actually a promotional. And then... Going across... Uh, Condemned. They're some of my favourite games on the Xbox 360. Such good horror games there. Silent Hill Collection is an expensive one. And then Enslaved, and there's two of the best games on here. Um, Spec Ops Line and Enslaved, Odyssey to the West. Right, come down to almost floor level. Have a bunch of different books and things here. Um, some of the retro gamer stuff is really good, especially the collections. So that's the Super Nintendo one. And then I've got the... Why do I have that? Oh... There we go, let's flip the NES book. I'm not really a Sega collector. Um, happy to have emulated Sega, and that's about it. Nothing particularly against it. I just didn't didn't have one growing up, so I was surprised when I saw that one. I thought I wouldn't have that in mind, and I don't. Well, I don't have it for that reason. Uh, my wife got me that a year by year visual history of Star Wars. Nice little collector's piece there. Not that it'll ever be worth anything in the way Star Wars has been going recently. Well, I'll leave it at that. Not really something that's going up in value. Lots more retro gamer. These are the Australian versions of almost, oh, what are they called in America? Um, I can't even remember, but these are the Nintendo magazines. That's what they used to look like in Australia. They were, they fell apart very easily. And the reviews in them were dubious at best. But used to like having a few of those. A couple of those I did have as a kid, but that came from my mate Brad. Um, yeah. There's a whole bunch of things in here from friends and family and things. Rage. Great game. This one's good. That's an American Game Boy magazine. And then just a bunch of other stuff. Like some music stuff. Some stuff that doesn't fit anywhere else. And then... We have the Nintendo 64. Um, game Boy and Loose. Loose Super Nintendo as well. Alright, let's fly through this. 
So what do we have in there? Doom. What's a better way to show these? Um, 1080. Yeah, I'm not going to name them. You can see what they are from there. Probably all very familiar to most people. The um, the colours of them. Oh, there's an expensive one. So that is that is demons. Press there. I've opened that up. That's a real one. Um, yeah, I don't know. I haven't played it really, so I need to because I've spent a lot of money on it. As I said, not real money, but uh, buying and selling money. That one actually came damaged. I wouldn't have kept that one because the original NES Battle Toads and Double Dragon is a lot better, I think. But it had ruined um, board that I managed to fix up, but I wouldn't feel good about selling it in the condition that it was in. Harvest Moon is another great one that's a bit expensive. Also, we have Cannon Fodder. Not one that you'll see in America. Super Street Fighter um, 2. Actor 2 is another pretty expensive one. Final Fight is an expensive one. Um, Mystical Ninja might be getting up there. And then what have we got here? Top quality talky video. That might give you a little clue about where I used to live. Not in Torquay, but down near that way. Um, oh, we've got modded consoles and things. Can't be bothered going through the console stuff. And a few other 64 titles in there. Yeah. That's about it. Oh. I guess Game Boy highlights would have got here. So that's a modded um, coloured screen Game Boy. Well, mm, yeah. Anyway, move on, move on, move on. A whole bunch of different Game Boy games and a few Game Boy Advance. Not as many Game Boy Advance as Game Boy ones. Um, what are some? Highlights in there. There's Castlevania Legends, that's an expensive one. So, can't read them, hopefully, you can see by the, the colours and the shapes what they might be. And they don't have the best camera for zooming, so apologies about that. I don't even know. Somebody got me to buy this one. Um, said that they were going to pay me back for that if I could buy it and then send it over to Germany, which I did for the guy for one game. And then he never got on. Well, he did. He'd spent ages to get back to me about this one. And it wasn't very polite, I thought. Um, so I kept it. I thought, bugger it. If, yeah, when you're trying to help somebody out and you're spending your money to help them out, bit frustrating when they keep you hanging and that was for months so it just got absorbed um that's a fake Fumble advance there's some other notable ones in here Survival Kids. The one number says 25 when I got that one for $20 at the market. That one's worth quite a lot of money. There's the first original Gargoyles Quest. Uh, Final Fantasy Adventure there. There's a quite... I reckon this one might be a rare one. You don't see it very often because it seemed to only be released in Europe and not really anywhere else and that's the Battle of Olympus which is pretty much um, yeah it's very similar to the NES version 
but it's just not one that you see. Um, it's not worth a great deal, as far as I know, but certainly hard to get your hands on if you're not from anywhere other than Europe. Astro Boy kicking around in the bottom there. I think that one might be worth a little bit. Zelda. Um, somewhere in there too. In this pile of goodies is my favourite Game Boy Advance game. I wonder, it's probably in there. It's actually in the Game Boy. Yes it is. Double Dragon Advance there as well. That's a real one. Um, they're all real except for one multi-cart that's in there. So they're all, uh, when I say real, genuine Nintendo rather than, rather than knockoffs. Okay, that's about it that I want to show from, from that bookshelf there. Let's head over the other side quickly and we're almost done. Milo's done. We're almost done too. Right, just opened one of the cabinets. I try and keep some of my boxes or a lot of my boxes. Um, but I don't like the amount of space that it takes up for an empty box. So it's only really consoles that I keep in box and um, there's Lego dimension stuff. And then not a lot of other things in there. I do have a bunch of consoles hidden away as in retro consoles and things. I've got an NES a SNES, a so the Nintendo 64 is out there. Um, the GameCube is away as well. Um, as I said, a few different Game Boys and Game Boy Advance and things like that. Um, the Wii, I've got a couple of Wii consoles, a um, couple of PlayStation 2 consoles, an Xbox console, Xbox 360, got a couple of those, but I think I showed one of those and one of those is in the car racer and so yeah they're all kind of tucked away hopefully one day to be brought out to be used let's get past the bookshelf a lot of Stephen King stuff in there even though I only think half of his stuff's any good and then science fiction and post-apocalyptic stuff I love that type of thing CDs go I won't show too much of these, but CDs go from kind of anywhere in the world and then that stops there and then it goes all Australian up the top. Um, I'm going to get a bunch of snakes over here. So kids got a kick out of having a snake in a jar that got attacked by a bird. I wouldn't, wouldn't go out there and purposely kill them myself especially when most of them are protected um, the dog does a pretty good job of keeping them away without getting bitten which is good um, but this one was attacked by birds only a little tree snake harmless so a bit of a shame that it got done but um, yeah we keep it in the jar just for the kids to have a look at um, and and so far we haven't had a venomous snake that we've found, which is good. There have been just different types of tree snakes about. Then the stereo system that I use is just an LG um, CD player. It's just a cheapie that I got off Gumtree for, I think it was 40 bucks. And I've been tempted to grab a few other ones that I've found online, but there's no point unless you're using them. Um, then there's no point keeping them in storage. Somebody else might as well grab it because there's been some cheapies up here, but yeah, let somebody else have them. Audio Technica turntable. Just the cheapest one there because it's hooked up to a cheap stereo. If it was hooked up to an expensive one, you might want a different one, but that's an AT LP60. So managed to get it in red it was second hand it was it wasn't even touched it had the person who i bought it for hadn't even put the belt on like pulled the stickers off the belt to make them work then 
have a VB vending machine. Um, you pop the button, they come out the bottom, they're supposed to play a song, but the little piece that plays the music has died. I can get the lights working on it, but nothing else. So I'll try and solder on another speaker and see how we go. I've already tried the capacitors and no good. Bunch of records up the top, as well as a bunch of records. Bunch of records on the rack. Bunch of car racing games and light gun shooter games. Wii, PlayStation 2, Xbox 360. Another bunch of rep records there. And... Um, yeah, back to this fridge. It actually opens up. It's got Great Northerns from Queensland in it at the moment rather than the Victorian bitters, but it's just a sliding system. You can open it up or you push the button and that's a, you know, just a novelty. Came as a promotion. $50 delivery if you bought 12 slabs in a certain amount of time and kept the receipts. Um, so lucky to have that one when it really if you, if you keep the receipts from those drinks then you can get it for cheap so it's just a matter of buying things in advance and then sending away for the 50. Um, yeah I've shown some records I might have to do a bit of an overview on best records that I have on best games in different collections and things but that is essentially it um, yeah, a bit of stuff hiding under the pool table. Oh, that's what I wanted to say as well. This carpet that goes around here, this is actually on tiles, this place. But having kids, especially having a um, son that's under one year old, it's just a nightmare. You can't put them on the floor with tiles. They'll crack their heads. So, um, you know, it only take one good fall back on tiles to really do some damage. So this carpet is actually carpet that I got for $50 um, is a house that had been recarpeted and they had all this brand new carpet at the time I've had it for a while now and they just had strips of it so $50 for all those and it almost did the whole room which means that when the kids are playing down here when they fall over it is much nicer to fall on something that is a bit soft and there's a few stains and things as you see that happens over time um, especially with kids it just means that you're not destroying all that tile that's under here it doesn't get slippery um, when they go and play in the sprinkler outside things like that so good things like that are just a, a bit of a, a, a game changer for a game room um, well worth grabbing and then we have the old ugly retro mat um, that fits in quite well as as well so not color blind I can see that that's a it's a um, yeah quite a quite a piece for the eyes um, but it does the trick when the kids fall off the couch there's no blood um, and that is about it I'm trying to think of if there's anything else that I should mention as I said most of it almost the whole lot came from buying and selling um, I did say I'd mention the bits that aren't which are the couch, the furniture, the TV um, that arcade machine $500 or so of that but the rest was so all the furniture, the books don't come out of the gaming money but everything else does, the pool cues, the, the buckets, everything so yeah it is well worth doing um this is about a what are we in now 2021 about a seven year collection we're looking at here all right if you made it this far into the game room 2021 um, room tour we're at the end and um thank you very much for checking out this video and if you stayed this long thank you very much for staying this long as well um, it is something that I hope that I shall do anytime we might move or anytime there's a, um, a different setup or a new year. Uh, we'll see how we go with that. Things 
can always change, but that is my intention at this point in time. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. I don't have many subscribers and would love to have everyone that I could on board. Um, I hope that you have enjoyed seeing this. I hope to go in depth with lots of stuff later on down the track. And um, I'm hoping that if you've got any questions or comments, you'll leave them down below and hit, as um, mentioned before, hit the subscribe button. Don't hit that bell if you don't want to. They're so frustrating coming up every, you know, five minutes with one of those notifications. So stay away from the bell if you want to, or click it if you um, are super keen. And thanks very much for watching another The Game Room video. Um, very much appreciate it and hopefully catch you in the next one, um, which who knows what will be at this point in time. Thanks very much.